stainless steel is an alloy of iron and carbon, although it may also contain other metals such as molybdenum or nickel. Stainless steel is a steel with high resistance to corrosion. Remind, we have a giveaway of a $100 valued item of your choice for the first 1,000 subscribers. Hurry up and don't miss it. Steel, in general, is a material of high hardness, toughness, shock resistance, and great mechanical strength. Like all types of steel, stainless steel is an alloy whose main component is iron to which a small amount of carbon is added. Stainless steel was invented in the early 20th century when it was discovered that a certain amount of chromium added to steel gave it a bright appearance and made it highly resistant to dirt and oxidation. This resistance to oxidation, called corrosion resistance, is what makes stainless steel different from other types of steel. Stainless steel is a solid material, not a coating, and when applied to ordinary steel to give it stainless characteristics, steels and even other metals are often covered or plated with white metals such as chromium, nickel, or zinc to protect their surfaces, or give them other surface characteristics. While these platings have their own advantages, and are widely used. The danger lies in the fact that the layer can be damaged or deteriorated in some way which would negate its protective effect. The appearance of stainless steel can vary and will depend on how it is manufactured and its surface finish. Stainless steels are primarily used in five types of markets, in large household appliances and small household appliances in the automotive industry, especially in exhaust pipes, in building construction, and urban furniture, in the food, chemical, and petroleum industry, and in the manufacturing industry today. Its corrosion resistance, hygienic properties, and aesthetic properties make stainless steel a very attractive material to meet various types of demands, such as the medical industry. Therefore, steel is a ferrous metal because its main component is iron and its manufacture, like all ferrous metals, is the responsibility of the iron and steel industry. The oxygen in water or air attacks the iron, damaging it and forming ferrous oxide. To prevent this, we add a proportion of chromium to the steel. By adding chromium to the alloy, we prevent the oxidation of the steel. This steel is what we know as stainless steel. Chromium has a great affinity for oxygen and reacts with it to form a chromium oxide film that prevents oxygen from continuing to penetrate the material, thus preventing corrosion and oxidation of the steel. The layer is called a passive layer. Even in the event of mechanical or chemical damage, this layer is self-repairing in the presence of oxygen. That is, if the passive film is broken and the chromium of the stainless steel comes into contact with oxygen, the film is regenerated so that the steel is stainless. The alloy must contain at least 10.5% chromium for the steel to be stainless. In fact, stainless steels are classified according to the amount of chromium in the alloy. Steel is the muscle of the 21st century industry, both in skyscrapers and super tankers. Steel provides strength to a structure, but any shipping magnate will tell you that the problem with steel is that it rusts when it comes into contact with two annoying things, air and water. Of course, no one wants to dine with rusty knives and forks. Fortunately, in the early 20th century, the industry found a clever way to keep steel beautiful and shiny using a very special mineral. Our story takes us to South Africa, where it is rich in minerals and miners. In these enormous mines, nearly 2 million tons of chromite are extracted each year. The problem for the miners is that the ore is trapped 400 meters underground at the end of a two and a half kilometer tunnel hidden in veins only 25 centimeters wide. Reaching it is a laborious process. There is a more direct way in a millisecond. 320 tons of rock are reduced to rubble. Once the smoke has cleared, this mountain of mud is sent to the surface. And after careful cleaning and roasting, the masses of chromite are transformed into gleaming pieces of quality ferrochrome. 
Now we travel about 8,000 kilometers to the north to a steel mill in the German town of Veit. Its owners produce over 145,000 tons of stainless steel each year, which is equivalent to about three Titanic ships made of stainless steel. To begin the process, enormous amounts of scrap metal must be melted. Of course, melting an old Lexus requires muscle, which is why they have crystals like this one. Every day, this 130-ton furnace consumes more electricity than the city's 100,000 residents combined. Once our old refrigerator has been turned into soup, ferrochrome is added, along with elements such as nickel and carbon in varying quantities. There are hundreds of varieties of steel, and it is in this phase that they are created. When the chromium in ferrochrome reacts with oxygen, it forms a layer on the surface of the steel that is too thin to be visible. This layer prevents the iron in the steel from reacting with the air and oxidizing. This chromium oxide is what makes stainless steel. After a little more slow cooking and refining, the stainless steel is ready to be poured. Pouring molten metal is a dangerous job. A stray jet could kill us, even if we're wearing aluminum foil clothing. Even guiding the load to the pouring area is a colossal task. Stainless steel is poured into hoppers on a continuous casting machine, then flows out the bottom and is cut into giant blocks. This is just what we need if we want to build a giant prison. But we're still light years away from knives. The blocks are passed to the person who may have the best job in the factory. It's like an industrial-sized computer game. The operator uses a series of hydraulic rams to crush the red-hot blocks and create pieces. The pieces are now thinner but still covered in dirt, so they pass through a series of rollers and descalers that clean and stretch the steel a little more. Once cut and cooled, the steel is ready to be made into canopies in Canada or barbecues in Australia. But to make quality kitchen knives, it has to travel an hour down the highway to the town of Solingen. For hundreds of years, men in aprons have hammered out a reputation for being the best German knife makers. The tradition continues with forges that produce some of the best blades on the market. Of the two million knives produced here each year, most are simply cut from stainless steel sheets. Grade chips require super sharp stainless steel blades, and like medieval swords, these must be forged. After heating the stainless steel block to 1000 degrees Celsius, a press creates the basic shape of a knife. When the steel cools, it becomes brittle. To make it harder and more flexible, it is heated again and treated in two ovens. Once hardened, the stainless steel knife looks perfect, but it wouldn't cut through a dessert. At this point, a good dose of old-fashioned blacksmithing is required. Or, as we're in the 21st century, robots working in an old-fashioned way. Unlike us, they never get bored of their daily work. To assist them, they have an army of mini-bots that carry knives from one station to the next and dream of the day when they will transform into authentic blacksmith robots and perform their dance. However, the traditional art of blacksmithing has not completely disappeared. When creating a super sharp blade, the finishing is still done by hand by the masters to remove fingerprint marks. Steel knives are grouped, stacked, and cleaned, and thanks to ferrochrome, they will remain that way for many years. Finally, a resident samurai checks the sharpness of the knives to ensure that each and every one of these super clean stainless steel blades can cut through anything. Now they are sufficiently reduced and sharpened to face a ton of tuna. The stainless steel knife is ready to take on all the dishes that the big consumers may desire. Remember, you can subscribe and like if you enjoyed the content.